Hi, so in this video I'm going to provide an update on Armadale Capital, a company that I'm invested in and I've been following the story uh, for a couple of years now, as you'll see from other videos on my channel. Uh, they've just recently delivered their optimised DFS and um, I'm going to provide an update on what this means um, the numbers around the DFS, what's uh, you know what's coming going forwards, and how the company can potentially progress from here through financing to production, and potentially paying a dividend. These are all my calculations in the video, so uh, you know I, I advise caution. Um, do your own research, of course, but uh, you know hopefully you find the video interesting. So they recently de delivered the updated optimized DFS and they increased the project MPV by 20% to 430 million. This is with a modest increase in CapEx to 39.7 million, which now puts that as a, a less than one to 10 CapEx uh, NPV project ratio with an incredibly high IRR of 91%. And remember, this is based on 25% of the resource. And we had a recent shareholder call with Matt Ball and some other shareholders, and he uh, basically said that uh, this is based on 25% of the resource, and the resource is actually open in all directions. So theoretically, um, you know, they can they could produce another project based on the overall resource, similar to what we've already got here. As I said, it's exceptionally low capex um, with a 1.6 year payback and this bodes well for going into financing discussions. <clears throat> you can see the various numbers on the DFS and you can see how it's been updated from the initial DFS iteration. And um, you know, obviously you can see the MPV has gone up, the total life of mine EBITDA and revenues have gone up as well. Uh, this is basically because they're going to be um, mining the high grade zones in years one to three, and then years four to 15, so 15 year mine life, they'll double the capacity essentially, put more ore through the mill uh, and increase the overall annual tonnage. Worth also noting from this slide that the basket price Armadale have used um, is even lower now than the 1179 they used in the first iteration of the DFS. Uh, and you can see in this table here that uh, most of the peers to Armadale, including those in Tanzania, um, are using basket prices, I would say a fair bit higher. So not only was the first DFS fairly conservative, the upgraded DFS, uh, the um, battery limits, the, the guys that did the DFS have actually moved the price down to be even more conservative, which I think um, would is very sensible because it's sort of under promising and then over delivering. So um, incredibly good numbers and uh, a project that I think will be very attractive to potential investors. We'll talk about that in a second. So moving on, what does it all mean then? So, well, from my perspective as an investor, Armadale are uniquely placed as they've got one of the highest purity low cost projects in Tanzania and high purity graphite is very important for when you're looking at target markets such as the electric vehicle market uh, given that you know uh, graphite is the dominant material in lithium ion batteries obviously there are many other uses for graphite such as expandables foils graphene as well so there's a, a you know a plenty of end market but uh, ultimately um, you know a, a strong flake size distribution with high purities is going to get you premium pricing, and that's what Armadale have. Also worth noting that, and in only recently last week, that there are uh, there's more uh, press coverage on the likes of China and the EU, and notably Germany, um, increasing their subsidies for the electric vehicle sector. So this is going to bring a lot of investment into the sector, and as I've touched upon in other videos, graphite demand is expected to go through the roof if not one of the most in, uh, in demand metals that we'll see an increase uh, due to the electric vehicle battery revolution. And obviously East Africa is expected to uh, take a, make a significant contribution to the demand 
uh, or, or, you know, of the Chinese, who are obviously the big consumers. But let's not forget companies like the US as well. They've got very, very limited projects. So they're going to be needing to source uh, graphite as well, especially if the likes of Tesla are opening up gigafactories in Nevada. So this is going to be very interesting and could be uh, multiple markets open to Armadale. So financing then, a real possibility now in my view. Um, they're very well positioned to achieve project financing given such a low capex, high returning project that's low cost. Uh, the recent RNSs have uh, all sort of alluded to the fact that financing is pretty advanced now. And, um, you know, the last RNS said that, uh, you know, uh, shareholders should look for news on this front. And to be honest, I think the company probably in the background will have been progressing this uh, since the first iteration of the DFS, perhaps even before that. So um, something that I think is, I mean, it's going to be a key re-rating step for me um, if they land some sort of financing deal. We don't know what that's going to look like yet. It could be a, a you know a project level investment. I mean, even if you gave away twenty five of the percent of the project, which is like got particularly high returns for all of the capex shareholders, would still be left with seventy five percent of the project for uh, complete complete free carry. Um, however, they might go for a lower capex type. Uh, structure with some equity in there as well um, or they you know they, they might just go for um, debt funding and equity or, or a complete combination of project level funding debt and equity so it's certainly interesting but there's a lot of scope and a lot of opportunity for Armadale to get the right package so key news flow to come then so obviously we've had lots over the last six months or so the company really have been ramping this up uh, the DFS was a major milestone and a de-risking step for the company in 2020. Uh, the share price is starting to react to it. Personally, if you want my own opinion, I believe that we're still nowhere near the fair value given the uh, you know exceptional project. However, it does seem to be that the market is picking up on this now. And what we've got to come and look forward to is the mining license process, which we should be getting some news on that soon. Uh, the conversion of MOUs into binding offtake agreements. My suggestion is that the company would have waited for the DFS before looking at, um, you know, progressing these to binding agreements and looking where the market is. So this will be very interesting as well to see if any of these pop up soon as the company have uh, if signposted. And then we've got the feed study to prepare for construction. So this is actually getting the thing off the ground and being ready to do the construction, which will take about 10, uh, 10 months to uh, 12 months to complete. And then obviously the key one and the thing that I think we need to look out for next, which is closing the project financing. Uh, as I've said before, there's uh, going to be various options for Armadale uh, on this front. Uh, but once we've done that, uh, let's say we close the financing in the next, say, three months, perhaps we could even get that news imminently, given what's been said in RNSs. Uh, I hope so. Uh, we could be looking at potentially getting construction started at the end of this year. We'd be looking at early 2020 uh, to be um, producing, uh, sorry, early 2022 to be producing. So I thought I would just summarize with a scenario. Uh, you know, having looked at the company, looked at the returns, seen the progress they're making, I thought it'd be very interesting just to do some quick calculations based off the DFS and just this one scenario that I've put together. Now, there are other scenarios that could be there, but I just thought it'd be quite Ill good to illustrate just uh, what sort of returns that this project could give shareholders if they were to basically hold their shares from now. And let's face it, if the company re-rates, there'll be a temptation for people to de-rest. There certainly will be for me, but I actually do believe this is now a project that's actually going to make it through to production. And therefore, now I'm starting to turn my attention to whatever level amount of shares that I keep, and I've got a significant amount, what sort of returns can I be getting from that? So the company could be producing, as I said, as early as Q1 2022, if you factor in the, uh, the timeline for construction and completion of financing. It's a 15 year um, mine life in the, in the latest study. Remember, this is based on 25% of the resource, which is open in all directions. You can see the assumptions that I've put together on the left hand side here. So things like the capex amount that's going to be need to be paid back. Uh, what the basket price, sale price that they would be expected to achieve, 
uh, the estimated all-in costs uh, for the actual um, production, and then obviously the margin, and then I've put in a government tax estimate here, which is my own estimate, but uh, a bit sim you know, similar projects, I believe, come in at around about sort of 20 to 30%. There might be some movement north of that, I don't know, um, but I've used 25% in these calculations. And then I've obviously worked out the shares in issue with uh, factoring in remaining warrants, because obviously I want to work out over here what uh, returns you might be able to get to shareholder today. And then I've just put down here the assumptions from the mine schedule that were in the, um, the DFS update. Uh, of the of the amount of annual tonnage of the products can be produced. Years one to three, they're going for a higher grade operation, which keeps the cost down with 61,000 tonnes per annum. And then year four to 15, the average tonnage will move up to 121,000 tonnes per annum when they double the meal, which they can fund from uh, uh, their own cash flows. So just stepping over to the right hand side then to wrap up. So I've calculated an EBITDA figure over years one to three of around 40 million per annum take off government tax, the company are left with 30 million in the bank. Uh, EBITDA years four to 15, based on 121,000 tonnes per annum, uh, would come would be 80 million per annum, take off the government tax, you're left with 60 million. Remember my estimates here are 25%, they could be slightly higher. So these are significant amounts of money coming into the company, theoretically in as little as two years time. And in my scenario here, I've said, okay, right, well in years one to three then, you know, we're making uh, decent money, we're not at a full production, but uh, imagine if we started paying back, say, a third of the capex uh, each year. So years one to three, we pay back 13 and a half million per annum, which means from our 30 millions that we've made uh, after tax, we're left with 26.8 million on the balance sheet. Now, theoretically, you could pay a small dividend from that if you wanted to. I would suggest the company, uh, and they've obviously said they've got to expand the plant, right? So they'll reinvest some of that money into um, uh, expanding the plant. So in years four to 15, um, this is where it really kicks in, in my opinion. Uh, essentially, the CapEx is fully repaid now. The plant expansion is complete. Well, let's pay a dividend. And let's face it also, Armadale is an investment company, right? So I would like to see them potentially investing in other assets as well, uh, in, in, you know, in the resources space. So if they allocate, say, 18 million, which is just 30% of um, you know, their, their year-end figure, then, uh, and they allocate that to a dividend, uh, with the shares in issue of 525 million, that would be a 3.4p per share dividend. That's a significant dividend to be paying. So here, a shareholder with 100,000 shares today receives a $3,400 dividend, obviously convert to pounds. You hold a million shares, that's a $34,000 dividend. So, um, you know, bear in mind, these are all my own personal estimations. You know, you, you do your own research, but they're based on uh, the DFS and uh, my understanding of, sort of rough tax assumptions. Uh, so you can see here that it is quite possible that uh, over the next sort of five years or so, well into production and having paid off capital, that the company could actually start paying a dividend. So I see this as a very exciting opportunity. I hope you liked the summary and um, uh, look out for the next video.